All right, everyone, please, yes, please, please give me a holler if you're uh, sitting in your own place, kind of locked in during COVID or whether it's the fire, fires or unrest or whatever it is that's keeping you inside. I'm glad you could kind of hang out with me for a little while. I'm going to go back to my roots, baby, okay? Uh, 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 I, if you don't know me, okay, I want to thank you for checking this out, okay? My name's Dave Nelson. I dream of a world where adults know how to feed themselves, and you've probably never heard of me, but I spent decades out there running crews and cranking out plates and and pans and platters of food and in hotels and restaurants all across the country. Uh, somewhere along the way, I discovered teaching and it got its hooks into me. Um, I uh, spent about 30 years in the industry and then I did another 15 years of teaching culinary arts. And now I now that I'm kind of homebound in, during COVID, I'm doing it here at home. So uh, let me get a little drink here, okay? Staying hydrated during, during COVID. Ah, so anyway, a couple of years back, long story short, um, I, uh, I basically wanted to bring my culinary arts classes to the general public, okay? I wanted to reach out to home cooks. So I started industry cooking classes and I started doing live shows uh, around town, just kitchen shows. It was kind of like a garage band, you know? I'd show up and just do a kitchen show for, for a, a bunch of people, right? And teach them how to cook. Ultimately, it was always about adults learning how to feed themselves. Right. And so uh, um, I was doing this on the side. I had a couple of other gigs. I was teaching college. I was teaching, um, you know, I, I had previously taught, you know, lots of lots, lots, all types of people from all backgrounds. Right. Tons of ex-military. And I even was teaching in a prison right before COVID uh, hit. And so now I'm kind of sidelined and I am cranking out these shows. OK, you might have heard of my quarantine kitchen happy hour. I am rebranding that. It just seems like the new reality is 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 here. So. I'm going back to the original industry cooking, okay? That's kind of what I'm branding it. So every Monday, that's what I'm calling my cooking shows. And I'm coming back to my roots here, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing back just the cooking shows and, uh, uh, and trying to keep uh, interviews with people maybe on another night. You can see my videos over there at uh, YouTube. If you go to YouTube, it's at the Industry Cooking channel, or you can join our industry cooking community over on Facebook and where you can kind of share ideas. And I'm actually setting up mentor pages over there so uh, people can reach out to each other and learn, you know, so uh, looking for those opportunities over there. You can kind of go over and join like-minded food folk and learn about cooking over there. Okay. So uh, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff. See, today we are um, looking at eggery. Okay. I'm doing egg work here. And again, I, I I teach culinary arts. I don't teach recipes. And so what I'm going to do is kind of just break down my standard egg lecture that I've been given for years. Okay. You know, this is how you set up an egg station and this is how you do over easies and scrambles and things like that. Now, um, I'm not, I should mention, I'm not going to cover poach. I'm going to do that in another class. I think I'm going to turn eggs Benedict just into one class because in that one, I've got poaching eggs and I've also got uh, hollandaise dynamics, right? And so I'll turn that into a whole show, but I need to kind of break things down. So I'm not trying to cover one, too much in one show. So tonight it's it's just eggs, like I said, the over easies, the scrambles, and the things like that. Okay, um, I'm also going to do a little omelet work, and I'm going to show you different styles of doing a couple of these things because hey, not everything works in every every situation, right? And so um, uh, we'll kind of talk about that as we go through. And so um, what I wanted to do first is kind of talk a little bit about eggs and and like I said, egg dynamics a little bit. And then I'm gonna get rid of my chair and I'm gonna get, you know, switch the studio around here at Industry Cooking, the industry studio, okay? And I'm gonna get into actually throwing down some of these eggs and I'll show you a little, you know, some of our tricks that we use in restaurants because, uh, hey, it's crazy working a brunch and we'll talk about some of those brunch dynamics, right? That's what this is all about, okay? So um, let's see, let's start out with eggs. And, and I should say I have covered some of these these, these things in other classes. I, I have covered eggs in, in uh, different ways in other classes. For instance, you may have seen one of my popular, uh, most popular shows, the egg salad soiree. Uh, gosh, it's, it's, and no wonder it's so popular because the kids just love egg salad, right? And so I was talking about eggs in that class and how to cook eggs. And I've done a little pastry talk and I've talked about eggs in those classes as well. So we're talking about eggs, right? Uh, just to get started, one large egg. A large egg is usually the egg that we talk about when we're looking 
looking at recipes out there in the industry, you see a recipe that says two eggs, large eggs is the size that is implied, okay? And that's what I'm gonna be implying throughout today's talk, okay? When I get a large egg at the grocery store, um, it weighs approximately two ounces and that two ounces is spread between pretty much equally, almost equally between the yolk and the white. So the yolk weighs about an ounce and a white weighs about an ounce. And if you're doing recipes and you have a recipe that says, hey, you need 12 ounces of egg white, hey, just crack 12 eggs and you're probably going to be pretty darn close to it. Okay. So um, uh, now uh, the yolk, very, very high in protein, also high in fat. It contains lecithin. So we use it in emulsions and things like that. We talked about that in an emulsion class uh, uh, not that long ago. Okay. Uh, the color of the uh, yolk itself is going to be affected by the diet, you know. So um, if you see those factory farmed chickens, you know, you get these factory farmed eggs. Um, it's pretty much, you know, they're eating corn most of the time. So you get this bright yellow corn uh, colored yolk, whereas you get a farm raised chicken. Chicken, you know, a real farm raised or heritage breech chicken that lives out there in the sunshine and eats bugs and all of that good stuff, you're going to see bright, bright orange. If you ever get a real farm egg, it's a different eating experience. So you should look into that if you haven't tried that before. It's good stuff. Okay. Now, um, as far as the whites, um, uh, the white is also referred to as albumin. That's the name of the protein that, that makes up the white itself. And um, uh, it's got some parts of the white are thicker and some are thinner. If you crack an egg on a plate, you'll see a, a, a nice fresh egg will have a, a yolk that's standing tall, right? And then you'll see like some thick white and then you'll see some thinner white coming out from the edges. And if you just cook a sunny side egg, you'll actually see those steps up in that egg. So some of it's thick, some of it's thin. There's a really thick part called the chalaze, okay? And it's that ropey white stuff that's in your egg centering the yolk. Um, and that's just albumin too. When you cook your egg whites, that just melts right into the rest of it, okay? So you don't have to strain that, strain that out of recipes or anything like that. It's just albumin. It's just a thicker protein form going in there. I'm not a science guy. Don't let, ask me to get too, too deep into that stuff, okay? Um, now, uh, so, so that's the egg. That's the white. That's the yolk, right? An ounce each in a large egg. That's, what we're, that's where we are so far, okay? Um, let's see, the shell is semi-porous, and this is important to know because it will absorb flavors. We've talked about this before, but it's always good to reinforce. Um, uh, if I store my eggs in a refrigerator that has onions and garlic and things like that, and then I take those eggs and I try and make a cake out of them or some other pastry application, that, that cake is gonna taste like onions and garlic because the egg is porous and it's gonna soak up flavor. So pastry chefs always wanna keep their eggs separate from everybody else's eggs. It's a good idea, okay? Um, uh, with that being said, you can use that to your advantage as well, right? You can infuse flavors into eggs. It's very common. Most, most common um, uh, idea here is storing some eggs along with your truffles and the, the truffles will soak up some of the flavors of those eggs, right? Or, or vice versa, the eggs soak up the truffles. What am I talking about? You don't want your truffles to taste like eggs. That's crazy talk, right? Um, so anyway, um, so porous shell, something to take into consideration, okay? That's why you wanna keep your eggs kind of well sealed and keep them away from, from the stinky stuff, okay? Um, when we're cooking in restaurants, things like that, we tend to use like grade A, double A, you know, things like that. Um, grade B, if you see those out there, you can use that for like baking or if you're gonna um, cook a custard that's gonna cook all the way, right? Well, that's baking too, right? And so uh, those applications, I can buy B eggs and save a little money, okay? If I'm in that situation. Um, you want to store eggs under refrigeration, okay? Um, in Europe, they still store them out at room temperature, but they don't wash their eggs there, okay? In America, we wash our eggs. It removes this protective covering on the outside of the eggs, and so they, uh, well, they, what's the, what's the word? They go bad faster, not go bad, but they, they lose quality faster. That's a good way to say that. Okay, so um, in America, we keep them in the refrigerator to, to slow down that process. Okay. Um, let's see, as far as like cooking eggs, what you're going to see as we roll into this um, is we're going to start out a lot of our applications, you know, on the stove, you know, when I'm, when I'm cooking here, you know, I'm doing my line cook stuff. Uh, a lot of that stuff, I'm going to start super, super high, but then I'm going to turn it down and go low and slow. And that's kind of the general rule when we look at cooking eggs. We don't want to go super high rocket fuel through the whole thing, okay? Um, you're going to get browned eggs, first of all, and sometimes you'll see like a golden brown omelet. It just looks so beautiful on the plate and everything, and it does look good, but browned eggs taste funky, and, and we actually tend to avoid trying to 
brown our eggs uh, uh, out in the business, okay? Um, even though it's pretty, you know, it, it, a brown egg has this sulfurous taste to it that's, that's not too appealing, okay? So we tend to avoid that, uh, generally speaking, okay? Um, other things to look at with that high heat, another, another reason that we want to avoid that is because that high heat is going to kind of overcook those proteins. I mean, if you picture the protein as like a wet towel and you're squeezing the water out of your towel when you're cooking these eggs at high heat, that's what's happened to the proteins in there. They're just getting tighter and tighter and it's just squeezing the moisture out of the eggs. And sometimes your eggs will be kind of watery, right? And then when you taste them, they're really, really rubbery, okay? Kind of on your tongue, right? So um, uh, high heats are to be avoided, but I will offer one caveat when I get into cooking my eggs here on the line. I'm going to start high so my eggs aren't sticking to the pan, and then I just go low to actually do the cooking, okay? I make sure they're sliding in there, and that will be kind of what you're going to see when I get into the eggs to order that we get into in a minute here, okay? Um, let's see. Many dishes to avoid this high heat, uh, many dishes can be cooked in like water baths and things like that, you know, your custards and, and bread puddings and things like that. We use those water baths. You've probably seen what I'm talking about. Uh, we use that to avoid the high heat that's going to kind of overcook eggs before the rest of the bread pudding is cooked, right? You know, and it can only get so hot if it's, if it's, up, if it's in some water, right? It only gets to about 212 where your oven might be 350. Hmm? It's like a bumper on a car right? You're not going to get so hot. Okay, so um, when we are cooking eggs, a few things to think about. I've mentioned this in another class too, but it's always good to throw the temperatures out there. When you're cooking your egg whites, uh, the temperature range that the whites cook is tends to be about 140 to 150. They're usually the first thing, first things to start scrambling in the pan. And, you, you know, that's when you see a sunny side egg, you know, it's cooking from the bottom up. Those egg whites cook really, really quick with that, okay? Um, let's see, the yolks, they cook more like about 145 to 155, so a little warmer. They can they have that fat component to them, so they, they, they start scrambling at a little bit higher temperature, okay? When you blend the two together, you're getting a scrambling at about 155 degrees, and then when you're doing custards, you add a little milk or cream or, you know, making creme brulees and stuff like that, you can get your temperatures up a little bit higher, and I actually did a class where that was actually important. It doesn't have much to do with what we're doing today, but, you know, like I said, good to go over these temperatures once in a while, okay? The reinforcement and repetition, it's a good thing, all right? So um, let's see, uh, let's see. Eggs in a pot, I'm gonna mention that. I, I got a list here, I wanna make sure that I cover everything. Um, when we are cooking eggs in a pot, that goes back again to uh, my famous, world famous, uh, um, internet's famous uh, favorite cooking video, the egg salad soiree, where I went through um, cooking hard cooked eggs. And I also talked about soft cooked eggs and medium cooked eggs in that one as well, okay? So generally speaking, when we're doing a soft cooked egg, these cooking times are from a boil. I tend to like to, to coddle my eggs. I run a little warm water on them so they come up to room temperature. And then I get some water boiling and I gently drop my eggs into the boiling water. I coddle my eggs so I don't have a big temperature difference here that's gonna crack my eggshell. So um, the eggs go in there for a soft cooked egg. That's a three minute egg. You've, you've heard about that all your life probably a three minute egg, okay? That'll be a soft cook egg. You pull it out and usually those are served warm, okay? Um, I've actually worked in places where we'll put those in a little chafing dish, basically, just like that, keep them kind of warm. Um, let's see, another thing is the medium cooked egg where we'll go about five minutes. That's your soft center egg. And then for a hard cooked egg, that's more like 12, 13 minutes, okay? Once those eggs are done, you're using a hard cooked egg and you're, you wanna chill it, make sure that you chill that egg as long as it took you to cook it, minimum, okay? You wanna chill it all the way to the center. Um, this is going to help you in two ways. It's going to help you avoid the green ring around the yolk, and it's also going to help you peel that egg, okay? When you shock this thing in ice water, that, that egg inside kind of contracts away from the shell, and when you peel it, uh, if you, it's very well chilled, um, they'll just fall out of that shell and just be really, really nice, okay? So those are your boiled eggs. Um, and again, I'm not going to do poached egg in this. I'm going to cover that one in a, a, a hollandaise class. I'm sorry, a eggs benedict class. That's what I mean to say, right? So um, let's see, it's, uh, that takes us through all of the other egg preparations, okay? I think I'm going to start cooking some eggs here. I'm going to generate a lot of eggs uh, as I do this, but um, you know, I probably won't eat them all, but I can kind of uh, incorporate them into a frittata or something, which is what I'm thinking of doing. I'll have a lot of scrambled eggs and over easies and things, and I can just kind of mince that up, add them up with some other fresh egg and mix it in with some veggies and cheese and bake that off and I'll have a frittata. And that's kind of my plan with that stuff, okay? So, so uh, 
back in the day when I was teaching culinary school, <laughs> what we would do is uh, we would have like a couple of days of breakfast. We'd have them come in and we'd have them practice a little bit of over easy eggs and scrambled on the, uh, uh, on the stoves in there. And then we would turn them loose the next day and I would start firing tickets and, and, and start, you know, over easy, give me two over easies and over hard and an over medium. And I'd go to another line and I'd, you know, give me a sunny side up and a scramble and a, a, a French omelet, you know, with cheese and Swiss and mushroom or whatever it is, right? And I would just fire ticket after ticket after ticket for as long as I had. And those students just went through egg after egg. We just cranked through those eggs all morning. And at the end, we just had a big pile of plates with eggs on them and everything. Just all of this student work. And it was their very, very first time of tasting what restaurant line work was like, right? And so it's just kind of an easy thing that you can do. There's only like one or two ingredients. It's oil and egg, really, for a lot of this stuff. And uh, um, uh, it really gave the students just the tiniest little taste of work in the line. And it was, it was. Uh, uh, I don't think very many students will ever forget uh, breakfast day at culinary school at least uh, in my kitchens. And so I uh, always had a lot of fun with it and I, I, I'm sure they did too. And I'm sure they learned a little bit, okay? Now, when we are doing these, I'm gonna start out with, you know, what I'm talking about here is eggs to order, okay? You know, I'll, we'll sell it in hotels on banquet menus, you know, eggs to order and you have a chef out there that can cook eggs or whatever. Uh, it might, we might add an omelet station as well. And so that omelet guy can also do eggs to order as well. They cover that. And that's just how we write that, how we say that. Um, as you're doing this, we're going to start out with the longer preparations. You may not realize it. It seems like sunny side up would be the easiest one to make. But when I get a sunny side up, I'm like, oh man, that one takes forever, right? And so I'm going to start out with a sunny side up and an over hard. That is also another one that takes a long time. One thing to know about an over hard egg is is that the people who order an over hard, that's an extreme position. That's like a well done steak, steak person, okay? And so if you get a, a if somebody says they want their egg well, that means there is no runny egg, no yolk, no nothing. That is what this person is telling you. And it takes you a long time to get there. And the trick is to get that without getting too much browning, okay? And so that's gonna be a challenge for me. The sunny side up is a challenge to cook the egg all the way from the bottom to get really all you're getting the white white is, is set. That's all you're getting. The yolk is still raw. This is not a recommended form way to eat eggs these days, right? But um, uh, it takes a really long time to get there. And the, it, you know, it, the trick is to not get browning underneath, right? We're always trying to get that, right? So I'm going to start out with those two long-term ones, and then I'm going to set them aside to kind of cruise. And then I'll start getting to the over easy and over medium, because those guys are just like quick, 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 okay? And so that's what you're going to see first, all right? Now, let me kind of show you my uh, stove setup here. I don't have much, okay? I've got some eggs, okay? I don't have omelet stuff out yet. This is just for working my uh, uh, my line here. I've got a little bit of uh, oil here, and what I've got is, this is a mix of clarified butter, and I added a little bit of canola oil to it, okay? And that's very, very common with what you're gonna see out in the restaurant industry. Not too many people are going straight butter out there for you know doing hash browns and flipping eggs in and things like that. It's very expensive. So it's usually a 50-50 blend that you'll see out there you can buy that or you can make it yourself okay and uh clarified butter i'll be hitting that up in the eggs benedict class okay so uh we weren't going to worry about that today i gotta just stick i gotta keep it narrow okay and so what i want to do is i'm going to crank on some flames here and i'm going to get some pans warm so we can get this party started um when we're working a restaurant line we want all our pans hot all the time. So I'm just going to spread things out and just start heating up some pans here. So two of these pans are on a very low flame and it's just to get them warmed up and I'm going to be moving them into my number one spot. When I'm working eggs, you know, if I got a new thing going down, I got to make an omelet or whatever, or I'm, I'm working on a certain dish, I might have five dishes going, but my main, I'm going to have one burner that is my favorite one that I'm going to, and I'll finish something here, I'll kick it to a back burner or the burner over there, and I move another pan into this slot, and I start doing my homework in there, right? So I'm kind of rotating these pans around as I work sometimes. Um, other times, not so much. It, it all depends on what's happening in the moment. So um, let's see, other things to have, you're going to want one of these here, okay? Um, in professional kitchens, oh, that's not the right kind of towel. Get rid of that. 
these guys right here. This is a standard restaurant towel, okay? It's a four square. And we get our station ready with a bunch of these folded up into um, quarters. And that's what we have in our, I'm a, I'm a righty. So I have this in my left hand all day. So I'm grabbing pans all day long. You don't see a lot of cooks, especially on a restaurant line. Um, you don't see a lot of people using things like oven mitts and quite frankly oven mitts in a professional kitchen everybody's using it i don't really want to put my hands in there quite frankly i hate oven mitts give me a nice clean towel any day make sure these towels are dry okay and clean because we're actually going to sometimes be kind of tapping some of the fat off of our omelets with these things and and maybe even shaping an omelet with these so we go through a ton of these towels because we need nice clean towels as we're working eggs okay Another thing that we have, this is my left hand. I have a towel in my right hand. I've got a spatula, okay? We have these rubber spoonchulas today, but yeah, rubber spatula. And by the way, I should mention, if I'm doing dinner service, I don't have a spatula. I got short tongs and a, and a towel in my other hand, okay? If I'm doing like a pasta line or something like that, big stuff, you know, it isn't tweezer food. Hey, that's, that's what, what I'm hand, I'm a lobster in one hand, right? And I got a towel in the other. And then breakfast service, it's a rubber spatula and a towel in the other hand, okay? I'm finally, um, I'm kind of singing and dancing here, uh, finally trying to get my uh, heat up on this pan here. I think it's gonna get uh, warm enough to cook in, in just a minute. Let's see, I've got my eggs here, as I said. And uh, let's see, I also have a stack of plates that I'll have uh, handy over here as well, okay? So as service is going on, I'll be plating things up. Everything is kind of close to me, except for my plates. They're kind of pretty far over there. I think I'll move them a little closer. And these are the types of things that I talk about with my students, okay? So I talk a lot about culinary school, but this stuff that we talk about in culinary school, you can totally use at home. If you are, you know, some people actually have several people in their family, they got to make eggs to order. Hey, you got a couple of pans set up. You want to make sure this is your setup, right? You want your eggs. There's a flow of the eggs to the pan. The fat's right there. I can kind of move there. I don't have to move much. My plates are right here. I can reach them, right? And, and I'm heating up these other pans. So once this one's out, I can move it to the side. I can kind of work another pan, have multiple things going on. Remember, the eggs that I'm talking about here, this sunny side up, it's going to take forever. It's going to be sitting back there a long time while it cooks, right? And so uh, that's kind of the idea here, right? And so, uh, gosh, I think I have just about everything ready to go. Let's cook an egg, okay? The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to start a sunny side up, okay? Now, earlier, I was saying we want to cook these eggs low and slow, but we always want to start with a high heat in your pan, okay? So I'm going to crank this one up. It's been just kind of preheating here. All of these pans are hard, hot enough to where it'll take them about 30 seconds to go when they're ready. Now, you might be a little surprised with the amount of fat that I use in these pans. We need a lot of oil because we want this stuff nice and slippery. We want the egg sliding around in there. There's a little bit of moisture still in that container when I put the uh, oil in there. So that's going to be popping all day. My apologies. And then another thing I should say is I'm just going to do single eggs here. Um, normally in a restaurant or probably at home, you're going to be doing double eggs here. Okay. It's more challenging. I just don't want to go through all these eggs, right? It's just me here, right? So I'm just going to do single eggs and I'm going to crack it on in the pan and I'm going to make sure it sets enough to be sliding. And I think it is. You guys see that, how it's sliding? I'm going to turn it way down. In fact, I'm going to turn it down as far as it'll go. I'm going to move this back pan to the front. And I just turned my smallest burner down to the lowest possible flame. When I got a sunny side up out in the industry, I would start my pan like this. Oh, darn, my yolk's already broken there, okay? I'm going to let that seep for a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll, uh, these aren't probably the freshest days. Uh, but what I was gonna say, when I got a sunny side up in the restaurant, what I would do is start it in a pan and then I would put my pan on the flat top where they're doing pancakes and hash browns. And it's a super low, even heat. Uh, remember, all I wanna do is cook the whites without cooking, without browning, right? And you can see that I already got a little bit of browning around the edges and I wanna just make sure that's all the browning I've got. I'm on a very, very small flame. And this guy's going to move off and on. I actually just kind of pushed him off to the side and he's off the fire. I'm going to let him just slow down. The next one I'm going to do is going to be a, a over hard. Okay. 
So this is gonna work the same way. I'm gonna crank it up, get my pan hot, and I got a little water in here, it's gonna pop. And then we'll crack an egg in there. Again, my sunny side up, it broke. That yolk broke there. If you've got uh, uh, eggs that aren't very fresh, those yolks will be broken on you. That's why you, that's why you want to get very, very fresh eggs. I'm sad. Okay, just trying to get my pan a little bit hotter. You're, you're looking for little ripples to start up on the surface. You'll see the surface of the fat shimmer a little bit. It's a very unique phenomenon. Phenomenon. One thing I want to point out right now is I haven't added salt or anything. When we're doing restaurant eggs, we typically do not season them. You get eggs at Denny's or something like that. There's no salt and pepper on that stuff, right? Uh, the guest usually does that stuff at the table at breakfast time. Okay, looks like my, uh, my egg has uh, not broken. My yolk hasn't broken. I started hot and I want to make sure that it's sliding, okay? So I'm going to keep that cranked until it's moving in there. And this is going to be an over hard. So I need to take this one a little slow. And my over hard is going to sit on another one over here. And it's going to go super low and slow until the bottom of it cooks, kind of like a sunny side egg. And then I'm gonna flip it over and it's gonna cook the rest of the way on the bottom. Again, that hard cooked egg, I'm sorry that uh, we were talking about an over hard egg. Um, that fellow cannot uh, uh, have any undercooked yolk in it. It's gotta be cooked through and through, okay? I'm kind of sad about my sunny side up egg, but around the edges, I don't like that browning, but the white is almost cooked, okay? It slowed way down. I'm gonna put it back on that super, super low flame and let it kind of cruise really low and slow. You can see why I started this sunny side up egg first. It can just be cruising back there while I fire another egg. And then I'm actually gonna get a third egg going in this other pan here. And it's not gonna be hard because that egg just kind of sits there like, a, like an egg, okay? Now my... Uh, my over hard seems to be getting a little sticky here. I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna slide. And there she goes, okay? You're using this spatula all day long. Now I've got this on a super low flame also. I want that to cook a lot uh, from the bottom up. And I'm gonna start kicking up the flame on this one. And I think what I'll do now is an over medium, okay? Let's do that. And that'll probably be the first egg that comes out of a pan here because an over medium is pretty quick. And an over easy is super quick. Here's a fun fact. Since egg work is so fast, average breakfast ticket time is seven minutes, six to seven minutes. You know, some guys are super, super fast. Um, it doesn't take very long. When you see this over easy egg, when you see me do a scramble, you'll be like, oh yeah, gosh, that, that's why the average is so short because it's so fast to make an over easy. It's so fast to scramble an egg. Okay, so um, let's, let's slow down the mix here because my over hard here, it seems like it's uh, pretty well cook, cooked on one side, okay? See how it's sliding. Now, sometimes my egg will be over to one side. You see how the yolk is kind of on one side here? So what I wanna do is get the yolk closest to me so I can spin my pan and I just went round and round and the yolk came closer to me. It kind of spun in there. So I just keep doing that, it'll keep sliding around. I don't wanna go back the other way. And now I'm gonna flip it over. When you flip, now see it got too brown on that side, I'm not too happy with that. But when you flip this guy, you don't wanna catch air. You basically just want uh, the egg to come up over the side and lay right over. It's really not much of a flip. Now I'm gonna let that cruise low and slow. I am going to turn off my sunny side egg. By the way, if I was in a restaurant and it broke like that, I would have to start over. Since I'm at home, I just don't want to be useful or you, uh, wasteful. You guys get the idea. Over hard is working hard on the other side. And I am getting my fat hot for doing an over medium right now. I've got a rubber spatula and I've got a towel. 
Looks like I got Laura out there. I got Allison out there. Thanks for watching, guys. I got Ms. Tamara out there. Thanks for joining. Okay, we're going to drop an over medium. Let me crack him again. I like to crack the eggs on a flat surface rather than on the side of a pan or something like that. Okay, I got another egg out that did not, the yolk didn't break. Now this guy, he's sliding, so I turned him down and this guy's looking pretty good. While he's going on that first side, he's an over medium, I'm feeling my over hard and he feels kind of uh, a little bit soft in the center. So I'm still going super slow. I'm actually gonna pull him off the heat and my sunny side up is done. So I'm turning that off. It's just waiting. I'm gonna finish this and then plate the other two, I think. And that'll be the first of our three eggs. It's super easy, okay? Big trick here, look how much fat is swimming around in the pan, okay? Those eggs have to be able to float and fly. Now, um, sometimes you get a little too much fat in there, uh, uh, you know, you, you just have to be really careful. You can really burn yourself with this stuff. If you don't have another enough fat, there's a trick that you'll use when I get into the omelet. You just dip your, let me get the uh, camera over here. You dip your spatula in the fat and then just kind of go around the edges with it, okay? Now this over medium is about ready to flip. So I'm just gonna give it a flip. And really, again, I am not catching much air. I think it's actually better to say, give it a roll, okay? You want them to roll over. And I can kind of show you a little trick here once I get an empty pan. I gotta get an empty pan to show you a trick. Okay, my over medium's just cruising along and I cooked it a little bit on that first side, okay? This is gonna be a soft center egg. While that's going on that side, I think I can pull out my sunny side up egg. So wiping things down. Now, when we are sliding eggs out of a pan, if it's a little, if it cooled off, it's a little harder to get them out. But basically we will tilt the pan and tilt the plate as well. Let me get a better angle on this so you can see what I'm talking about. See how I'm tilting the plate? and then I tilt the egg as well and lay it on down, okay? And there's my first egg, that's a sunny side up. When you're done with that, you're actually just wiping out your pans. I'm gonna be honest guys, in restaurant service, they're not sending that to the dishwasher, it's a Teflon pan. We wipe it out with a clean towel and we throw it back on the fire and the fire sterilizes it basically. There's not gonna be a bacteria left for the next round of eggs, right? Uh, they don't take the uh, uh, flat top where they do the pancakes to the grill, uh, to the dishwasher all the time either, right? So one other thing to kind of show you, now there's a little bit of oil on the plate. We'll just dab that a little bit. And that's what I said, we go through a lot of towels. We'll have a clean egg towel basically, okay? Now I'm feeling my over hard egg here and my over medium egg is done. So let me give that a little flip back over and I'm gonna lay that one on down too. There's my over medium. Hey, that's more browning that I would like. But that one is feeling a little bit soft in the center. And then my over hard, I'm gonna give that a flip. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's hard, all right. And he's pretty well cooked. There's no way that there is gonna be any cooked yolk in there. This guy is still a soft center. He's still a soft center. So those are my first three eggs, okay? I'm gonna keep on banging out more eggs here. Basically, there's a bunch of fat in this pan and it's a clean pan. I could just go right into it, okay? So let me think, uh, I did an over hard, I did a fried, I did an over, oh, I didn't do a fried egg. Let's talk about a fried egg, okay? I think I can just kind of talk about it. A fried egg is, is what we used to do for a sandwich back in the day. Okay. Um, you're now that now that we see breakfast sandwiches on menus, it's a little more popular. We're seeing those soft center, like medium eggs or even soft eggs in a sandwich. But when I was growing up, I was I was taught that it is a disservice to the guests to serve a soft centered egg in a breakfast sandwich. And and even me knowing this, I have had sandwiches just explode all over me. I know it's a soft center and I know what what's going to happen, right? Um, so back in the day, I mean, I was taught as a kid to use a fried egg. And what a fried egg is, is you start out just like an over easy or an over hard, basically, but you pop the yolk, 
you cook it on one side, you flip it over and cook it on the other side, and it's kind of cooked through and through. If I'm doing a breakfast sandwich, I still kind of do a fried egg, but I cook it to a medium, basically. So it's still, it's like a soft center fried egg, okay? And I can do those out on a flat top or something like that. I don't have to do them in a pan, okay? But when you hear the term fried egg, if somebody says the word fried egg to me, that's what I'm thinking is like yolks broken and it's cooked through and through, really, uh, or medium, maybe depending if it's specified. Let me get a little sip here. It's a hot kitchen today. Mm. Okay, so that was fried egg. Um, we just did an over medium. Let's do an over easy. These are super, super quick. I'm gonna kick up the heat a little bit. I should mention, by the way, these are Teflon egg pans, okay? The um, standard sizes for egg pans were, um, this is an eight inch right here. This was the standard that I grew up with. Um, these guys right here are the new egg pan that you see around and these are sevens, okay? These are seven inches. They're perfect for an over easy, uh, uh, an order, I should say, of over easy eggs. The old omelet pans, 10 inches. This is what I grew up on, a 10 inch, and an eight inch for eggs. This one's for omelets, okay? That's an omelet pan. If you are doing uh, omelets for buffet, you don't want a three egg omelet. So you'll use, you'll use a small egg pan for buffet omelets. All right, so my, uh, my fat is hot. We're gonna break out an over easy egg now, okay? Again, I'm just doing singles here just to conserve. So my fat was hot. And it's bubbling and I wanna make sure it's, it's at a high heat, but I'm gonna turn it down once it's set on the bottom, which it is. It's sliding around in there, all is right with the world. Like I said, if I'm in the restaurant business, I don't season the eggs, salt and pepper. If I'm at home, um, I season the underside. What I'll do is put like a little salt and pepper in the pan and then I crack the egg on it. And then when I flip the egg, it cooks on the other side. All the specks are on the bottom of it, and then I flip it back, and the top is still reasonably clean. You might get a couple of specks on there, but I still got my salt and pepper on there without, uh, you know, showing the, the funkiness of it, okay? All right, so I turned it way down, and this egg is sliding around beautifully. I'm going to bring the yolk. I give it a little swirl, brought the yolk over to me, and I'm just going to give it a little roll, okay? It's not a flip. You're not catching air. You don't want to go above the coping, if you're familiar with the term. Now this isn't gonna be on this other side. I'm at super low right now. I just wanna set up this other side a little bit. And you don't wanna have a, a, you do wanna cook the white here. So you gotta let it go for a sec. I'm getting a tiny bit of browning on the other side and now I'm gonna flip her over and that's a beautiful little over easy, okay? Lay it out on the plate and there she goes. A little extra fat, wipe it up. And that's your over easy. She's beautiful. Whoa, where is it? There it is. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Another one that's kind of fancy is a basted egg, okay? Now, if you're at home and you, you're nervous about this flipping, but you still like an over easy egg, let's try a basted egg, okay? I'm going to start it out in a regular egg pan with a little bit of fat, and I'm gonna, it's going to start exactly like all the other eggs. By the way, I should say basted traditional basted egg, European style, you're gonna sit here with a bunch of fat in there and you're gonna ladle fat over the top of the egg, okay? I'm gonna show you the American diner style of basted egg, okay? That's what we're gonna see here. Uh, very, very quick. You just need a second pan that is the same size as the first, okay? That's what this needs. Um, so I have a little bit of fat. Let me add just a tiny bit more oil in the pan for this. Like two teaspoons in there, maybe, right? And I'm going to drop an egg in. This is hot, and we want to get it going just like we did over easy, over medium, and over hard. And we start at a high heat, but once we get it rolling, we turn it down, and we just kind of want to make sure that it's sliding around in there. It's so pretty. Okay. Now, for a basted egg, I don't want to worry about flipping this. What I will do is get a little bit of water and I toss it in the pan and I throw another pan on top and I crank it. And we're just steaming the top. We're making an over easy egg without all the flipping. On the restaurant line, we didn't pour water in, we'd grab a chunk of ice and throw it in the pan. 
easy to pick up, toss it in there. But it's in there steaming right now and the top is cooking and it'll look just like an over easy egg when it comes out. This is a fairly low fat method of cooking an egg actually. There's a tiny bit of fat in there, but less than if you're doing an over easy or something along those lines. And then my egg, my basted egg, you can see it now. It looks like an over easy, right? It, it just caught it for a second, right? There's a little bit of moisture in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it out with a slotted spatula or fish spatula. And that's my basted egg. Whoop, whoop. So far you've seen an over easy, an over medium, an over hard. You have seen a sunny side up and you've seen a basted, okay? That's the basted. Um, I think we gotta start talking about scrambles now. I think that's all of the uh, uh, tossed eggs, okay? So I already cracked some eggs for this, but I haven't blended them. I just cracked them into a container and I wanted to kind of to, uh, have a word with you about that as we get into these scrambled eggs. Um, oftentimes you'll see people add a little milk or something, they're scrambled eggs. And the idea is that it's that idea of making a custard. When you add milk to eggs, they're not so rubbery anymore. They're softer on the palate. And, and they also might even, it might generate a little steam within this protein matrix that, that allows the whole thing to rise up and become even lighter and fluffier, right? And so you'll often see people adding milk to the eggs, but what we're really trying to do here is kind of dilute the eggs. So what a lot of people will do instead of milk, which has protein in it, right? Uh, why, we're trying to dilute protein. Why not just use water with this, right? And so uh, some chefs will use cream in here, you know, and, and French uh, uh, scrambled eggs with cream are, are, it's quite an experience, right? So you can kind of play with milk. You can do water, give you a lot of volume. It makes them fluffy and soft, right? Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, the cream, of course, adds that fat and richness to it, right? So that's that's also kind of an experience, right? So um, what I'm going to do first is these eggs, I'm going to add just a little splash of water to them. I usually just go a little water at home and I just do a tiny splash. You don't want to add too much. I mean, it's really easy to cook it on out and everything. And I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning to this because this isn't restaurant service. I'm actually going to, we're going to eat these omelets uh, for dinner. And I'll, I'll just a little story about that. I have been, I started out in breakfast, right? I have done untold countless egg dishes and things in my life and just the you know banquets and buffets and all of it and just the smell of eggs just kind of doesn't do it for me anymore right but um i'm gonna just cover this up with a bunch of broccoli and mushrooms and cheese and just i'm just gonna have a small omelet underneath all of that and it's gonna be a european style omelet where we put fillings over the eggs instead of inside them. So uh, for my uh, wonderful Mrs. Nelson, she's going to get an American style diner omelet. And uh, you'll see me getting this European omelet. And I'm just going to cover it and try and hide the eggs as much as possible because I just can't even look at them. Um, let's see. Uh, but first, we're going to look at scrambled eggs, OK? I want to do two versions of scrambled eggs. Before I do it, um, one thing about the scrambled egg, we want them perfectly blended, OK? If you go in there and you have streaks of white your scrambled egg or streaks of white in your omelet. It just looks awful, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and use a blender. And I remember my first job, my first job was at a place called Nicole's Omelet House, um, where we were cracking eggs back in the old days, right? Nowadays, you buy them and, you know, buy the gallon pasteurized, you know? Um, but in the old days, we were just cracking eggs like crazy and then blending them in this little bar blender and then doing the next batch and doing the next batch. We did the whole thing in just a little bar blender have those stick blenders and I'm just going to zip this really quick again so it's just one homogenous mixture. I'll be right back. Okay, so my eggs are nicely blended and I'm going to drop a nice little ladle in there. And earlier we were talking about one large egg is two ounces, right? And so I've got a two ounce ladle right there and so um, as I make these omelets, I've got the uh, a ladle that can just measure out my eggs for me, okay? So let me put that off to the side. I'm going to start out with scrambling first, okay? Now, um, the first scramble I'm going to show you is like the French method of scramble. Um, oeuf brouillé or whatever. It's, it's basically... Um, uh, it's very, very slow cooked. It's very strange. I went to culinary school and I saw this European egg, uh, uh, European scrambling method. And uh, I was quite taken aback because again, I grew up in breakfast restaurants where we just zip them out. So that's the second style that I'm just gonna show you here. But with the first style, I'm going to get my pan going and I need about a medium heat here. And I'm gonna add a little fat to it. Again, this is clarified butter with a little canola oil in there. That's what I'm going to be using for my, as I move through my breakfast classes. All right, let me get a little more light in here. 
I don't think we can see much. There we go. Right on. Okay. Okay. And there's the pan. It's heating up. I got a little heat under there. And for this European style scrambled egg, this is a slow cook. Oh, brûlée, as I recall from culinary school. Okay. And so it goes in and the idea here, we'll season it. I'm going to season this one. The idea here, slow movement, slow cook, large curds of scrambled eggs. When we are looking at the European style, large curds, you let it set and then you kind of move it around. La la la. And we let it sit. Oh, brûlée. Also, I should mention when we're doing eggs, European eggs, we don't cook them all the way. They're still a little runny at the end. They're a little loose. It's a thing. Some people like that. Large curds. I'm just kind of folding them over, folding it over itself and cooking new surfaces, allowing new surfaces to hit the pan. This is going to be a little bit loose and eggy, I'm telling you. This is a French style scramble. You'll see this in Canada. And I don't want any of it cooking too much. If it starts looking a little bit white, you're cooking it too much. The eggs will lighten in color. So there's my European scrambled egg, large curd. It's like a an abused omelet, I think. You know, there's really not much to it, okay? And now I want to show you the American scrambled egg that I'm used to. This is what I grew up with. Start heating up a pan here. It's very different. And I'm just kind of cleaning a pan. Um, now a breakfast cook has pans that they use and nobody else gets to use them, okay? When they get, all the breakfast cooks I've known at night, they stash those pans at night. They'll stack uh, um, towels in between the Teflon surfaces and stash them in a locker or take them home or whatever it is. Um, you don't want your nice egg pans just laying around for anybody to use them. Okay, I'm getting a little fresh fat in a pan and now we're gonna see an American scramble. Towel in one hand, rubber spatula in the other. Let me wipe that off. Hey, hey Chef Andrew, good to see you. Crack them in the strainer, smack them with a whisk. Yeah, yeah, I know that trick. In fact, we would use the, um, the cone strainer after running them through the blender to catch all the shells. The longer you cook them, the, the whiter it will become. If you are doing um, hard cooked eggs, you know, hard boiled eggs, um, if you overcook them, if you cook them for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, the yolk starts turning white on you. Okay, so I'm starting off an American scramble. This is two eggs. Okay. And it gets in the pan and you scramble. This will be done quick. And I keep it at high heat. Eggs go all over the place. Round it off once in a while and go back. Crank it up. Come on. These are small curds. And we just crank it out. Earlier I was saying, these guys we go a little further, but that's how fast it is. Uh, so I said it was about six or seven minute ticket times in a restaurant. And that you saw how fast that scramble was. That was well under a minute just then. And uh, so you can definitely see why you would have such a short ticket time. So there's an American scramble. It's cooked a little bit more and it's just done at high heat and you just slang it out quick as you, quick as you can with your rubber spatula. It's super easy to scramble. Now, if you're doing scrambled eggs for a buffet or something, you want to hold them hot you might have seen that scrambled eggs will start turning green, you know, especially if you put them in like a, uh, one of those warming dishes, like a shaper or something along those lines, right? So what we do in the industry is we'll undercook those scrambled eggs and then finish with a little heavy cream in there. And that, that cream keeps it, you know, that fat in there, it keeps it from oxidizing. And that's kind of exactly what's happen happening is the sulfur is oxidizing in there. You know, how metal rusts, you know, and it turns red. 
the sulfur in eggs turns green, grayish green, nasty color, right? And so uh, we add a little fat to it, dilute that sulfur a little bit, and it's less likely to come in contact with the heat. It's going to make it change color and, and all of that. So um, that's kind of the trick we will use, a little bit of heavy cream. In the old days, we used to make an old, um, uh, an old sauce called bechamel, and we would add that in there as well. But another trick to that is cooking the eggs under, OK? And that is my scrambled egg talk. Let me move some eggs out of the way. I think that's good. Okay, so what I want to do next is um, crank out some omelet work, okay? I'm going to get all of my burners going, so all of my pans are just a little bit warm. So I got tiny flames under everything. And when I'm working in an omelet station, I don't know if, if you guys have ever been to an omelet station, right? But you go to an omelet station, you ever get mushrooms or something? You ever have them just put the mushrooms in there raw? Or it doesn't even have to be a station. It could be at a restaurant or whatever. You know, that stuff needs to be cooked out, right? And a lot of the times it needs to be cooked out right then. So um, I've got mushrooms cut here, you know, that's going to cook now before I throw it in the omelet. I would never throw that in an omelet. It would be just as crazy to throw like raw broccoli in an omelet too. So I'm going to cook these guys off real quick. And then I'm going to use that for my omelet filling. So high heat. And I'm going to throw in, whoa, that was too much fat. We're going to need that in other pans anyway. All right. So in go my mushrooms. And mushrooms, I want to spread them out. I want a good amount of fat in there. I dropped one. I might add a little fat back in. Sorry, guys. And we want this guy cranked. I want to try and get a little color on these guys. While they're going, this isn't a bad time to uh, hit it with a little bit of salt. Maybe a little pepper. If you're into that kind of thing. Okay, they're cruising along. Mushrooms are started. The other pans are just kind of hanging out. And this is searing mushrooms 101. I've done this in many classes. Oh, it's good. Next on deck is going to be the broccoli. This is just going to take two minutes, guys, to cook off these fillings. Didn't toss those mushrooms yet. I just kind of left them there to kind of sear off on one side. I'm going to toss them in about one minute. I might add a little more oil to it. I'm thinking I might just add a little more oil to it. I think I'll just do that right now. The mushrooms just soak up a ton of fat. And I'm going to toss them around. And I'm going to spread them out. And I'm going to step away, step away from the fungus, and we're going to let them sear again. Get some color on those bad boys or on those young ladies. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I love a good seared mushroom. Nothing like it. You want to talk about umami? Would you like to talk about umami? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just took a little sip there, trying to stay hydrated, and I'm spreading those mushrooms out. And I'm going to let them develop color one more time. I think what I will do is throw in my broccoli on top. Get that broccoli to start thinking about being cooked. I think I'll add a little more seasoning to that. So this is just mushrooms and broccoli and a little bit of the oil. Your oil of choice. And those mushrooms are still getting color on the bottom. They're still touching the metal in that pan. And the broccoli's steaming a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to give it a little toss. And stick. This is going to take about two more minutes, if that. Spread them out. I was going to spread it out with my fingers, but people are watching. So I grabbed, it. So I grabbed a uh, spatula. That's awesome. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I think I've got some cooked off filling. If I'm doing a little omelet station, I'm just doing a tiny little bit and it doesn't take very long to cook up. But I got to get that stuff cooked off for people on, you know, Mother's Day brunch and whatnot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that aside, turn everything off under that, and I'm going to bang out just a tiny little French omelet in this one, okay? Again, that, that French European omelet, you're going to see kind of a slow cook thing and uh, uh, well, it's just very different. You're going to see me kind of rolling the eggs around the pan and sliding things around. You'll see. You'll see. It's uh, kind of different. And then I'm going to show you an American diner style omelet, right? Very different. All right. So I think for this one, I'm going to uh, make some um, herb omelets or some scallion green in there. So I'm actually going to toss that in the oil so it gets a little flies a little bit and flavors the oil. 
and then I'm going to add 2a. And I'm going to start kicking it up a little bit. And I want this omelet to just start forming around the edges. And I start pulling it around and pulling the cooked stuff to the center. And if I want, if I feel like I need a little more fat, I'll just dip my spatula in the oil and just kind of add a little fat to the edge of the pan. Now I'm going to turn it down a little bit. We're going to take our time here a little. I need about medium heat. I'm probably on about five out of seven right now. Maybe six, maybe six out of, uh, I'm sorry, six out of 10. But right now you can see the omelets kind of forming in the center as I'm pushing the egg around. And any uncooked egg, I'll kind of push it out to the edge because Americans don't really dig the undercooked egg. And there's very little uncooked egg left now. And I just keep rolling my pan around, kind of tilting it to try and get all of that uncooked egg off to the edges. And my French omelet is essentially done, okay? So what I do now, again, it's a little loose inside. That's how it is. I'm gonna basically turn this guy off. I'm gonna get a pan. And for a French omelet, they roll them out towards the front. They'll take the pan and they have this weird thing. You reverse your grip and you kind of tap the edge of this thing and let it slide forward in the pan. And it begins to kind of start curling down there. You can kind of use a spatula to help it. Come on, curl, buddy. And tap it some more. It goes down to that corner and you curl it a bit more. There we go. Curl it a bit more. Come on, buddy. And they keep tapping. It's just mind numbing, okay? What I'm going to do is just flip the thing a little bit and roll it up and then just roll it out onto my plate like so. I like to roll them out sideways. But this is kind of a three-fold omelet. And it's just kind of free form. It's a series of, you know, large curds just barely held together. Boy, not a lot of contrast there on that plate. Um, but barely held together, right? It's like big curds. Now, this guy, we would split on top. I could use a spatula or a knife. And it's a little loose and runny inside. And this is where I lay my mushroom filling over the top. Seems a little weird. Again, this is our French or European style omelet. So here's my mushrooms. And I told you I was going to try and hide this as much as possible. I just don't. Oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. I don't really dig the egg thing too much. And then I drop a little cheese over the top. Now, if I had a broiler, I would just set this under the broiler to let the cheese kind of melt. But otherwise, I got kind of a blob of cheese there. It's hard to use. But otherwise, uh, this just melts naturally with the heat, OK? So I'm going to set this guy aside. And I'm going to make an American-style omelet. So there's a French omelet. It's kind of a three-fold omelet split open toppings over the top and then you kind of melt the cheese okay and i'm just going to let that melt in the heat of this kitchen it's probably heat hot enough to melt in here <laughs> all right so that was a that was a european style omelet very very slow we're tilting the pan and just kind of pushing the egg up and letting egg raw egg flow into the gap and then that egg, egg that cooked portion kind of gets cooked uh, push to the center a little bit. They're very strange. I'm going to show you the American style omelet. Just like the American style scramble, it's just like a hot pan. We scramble it up and fill it, put the fillings in, and we roll it on out, and it's done, okay? Um, so that's what you're going to see next. I got a hot pan in the back. I'm going to switch these guys around, and we're going to kick, kick this up. Whew. It's a hot one in the industry kitchen, I'll tell you. You better believe it. I shouldn't say that. I know uh, there's people out there in the industry that are in some real kitchens that are hot, real heat. All right, this pan's getting a little bit hot. We're going to go ahead. Again, I want to start out by flavoring my fat with a little bit of that green onion. I cook it in there a little bit and yield a little flavor. I'm going to add a little more fat to the pan. Boop. And once it starts getting a little more hot, I'm going to drop in some more egg. Oh, yes. 
Eggs of glory, folks. Eggs of glory. Don't forget why we're here. To honor our breakfast heroes. Okay, we're doing an American style omelet. Let me grab my spatula here. Let me get a fresh one. So I throw it into a hot pan with some fat and I start scrambling it up, just like when you saw me do the scrambled egg. And I start rounding it off. And I'm gonna continue doing that until it's almost set. This goes really fast. Okay. It's almost set. I'm pulling it off the heat. I'm gonna turn my heat way down. I don't wanna make the underside all super golden brown, but what I need to do is it's still a bunch of scrambled egg in there. I need it to set up a little bit. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna get a little fat around the edges of this thing. I'm gonna turn it up slightly more and I'm gonna start making an omelet out of that round piece of scrambled egg I just had. I gotta get the heat up because this guy's, uh, he wants to glue to my pan or something. It'll get there. I just put a nice little drop of oil all the way around. Oh yes. You are so beautiful. You better believe it. There she goes. Okay, she's all in one piece and she's sliding. Okay. Let it set up just a little more. You gotta have it hot or it's not gonna slide. And for the American omelet, we're gonna flip this guy, okay? Beautifully done. It's inside. The other side is cooking. Because he doesn't want to slide. Let me get a little more fat in there. I want him sliding. Again, when we're flipping these guys, I want to show you a little trick if I got something around here that'll work. But uh, when you're flipping these guys, you don't want to catch big air, okay? This isn't like a, a, a half pipe. You want to keep it low and just enough just enough energy to roll it over. Just roll it. It's a gentle rolling motion. And let me put a little filling in this guy. I got my cooked off filling. And I'm going to run it parallel to the handle, if that's how to say that, right? Long ways. It's spread out. And I'm going to get a little cheese in there, a little queso. I'm going to spread all that out. And again, we have broilers in professional kitchens that will melt all this cheese. They're called salamanders and we kind of pick it up. We'll put it like it's where my microwave is and we'll put a put it in there and it'll just melt that cheese on top. But I do not have that in, in here. So what I'm gonna do is pop this on out. Now this is a very puffy omelet. I put a little bit of water in there and so it puffed up. Uh, and I'm gonna roll this onto a fresh plate, okay? When you're rolling out an omelet, American style, this is diner style, let me get a plate that has a little contrast. I have this orange plate. You're not gonna be able to see my omelet. So this is another one where we tilt the plate and tilt the pan that it's coming out of, okay? So I wanna kinda do this and I just roll it over and then that omelet comes on out. Just the tiniest bit of brown there. I'm not really looking for that. And then this one, I like to fold over as well. And that's a beautiful omelet right there, okay? The missus is gonna love that. Oh, you guys missed it, okay? But basically I rolled it on out and then I just kind of shaped it a little bit. And I'll get a little towel and clean it up. Everything's off right now. And that's a nice little omelet, okay? I'm very pleased with that. I got some potatoes to serve with this and that's gonna be our dinner. This isn't really a potato class. Now, Evan's got a question out there. If guest, guest wants fluffy, is that a technique? You can absolutely do like souffle omelets where you will, um, you know, you separate the yolks out, you'll whip up the whites a little bit. You might add a little flour to the mix to give it some stability, a stabilizer, give it structure. And then you fold all that stuff together just like a souffle and you cook it just like an omelet in a pan. And, and that's it. As you're doing that, by the way, it's, it's kind of baked like a frittata. You're not going to be in there stirring it around or anything like that. It's, it's just going to kind of bake, right? And so uh, it's really not very different from a souffle if you're adding like flour to it and things like that. But uh, that's, that's a whole conversation. But yeah, if, um, separating some whites or adding extra whites to it to add some air, air. Um, aeration, yeah, absolutely. That'd be that'd be a way to go. Um, but the what the that little water trick does add, you know, the steam. Like I was saying, water droplets trapped in a protein matrix, and that water turns to steam, and the eggs are going to stretch, right? And they're going to pop up until they kind of deflate after a while, right? It's a good way of uh, uh, getting a little bit of 
puff out of your eggs, okay? So uh, I wanted to show you one more trick here before I let you go and uh, we'll, we'll kind of sum things up, okay? So I wanna talk about flipping the egg and I, I should have talked about this earlier. But what I will do is I'm just trying to clean up down here. What, what they taught me when I first started doing this stuff is that the, I wanted to get on the breakfast line, you know, I want to be a cook, you know, those guys are rock stars, I want to do it, right? And so they gave me a pan to take home, and they gave me a, a piece of bread, you know, a, to a piece of stale bread. I'm just going to find a coaster real quick here. I think I got a coaster. Perfect. Okay, and so I'm going to use a coaster here. It's just a square piece of cardboard or whatever the heck it is. And I would go home and uh, they sent me home to practice flipping this. And that's it. Again, you don't want to catch big air where it's getting up out of your pan, right? You want it just to roll over. It's hard to do if you're getting a corner. There you go. If you can get it to just roll over, then you got the motion. And that's how you get your breakfast work done. Very important that you have the right kinds of pans, right? I get these at restaurant supply stores. They're not fancy. Once my Teflon is scratched up, I just get rid of this thing and, and get a new one there. I bought one for 12 bucks today. You know, I would never buy a, an expensive Teflon pan. I just get the, the cheapy stuff and, and I abuse it. It's because I abuse it, right? Because that's what we do in the, the business. Okay? Um, so let's see. Summing up, we talked about a lot of egg knowledge today, right? We talked about where to store eggs and we talked about the composition of eggs and the egg yolks and the uh, egg whites or albumin, right? We talked about that little ropey thing, the chazole in there. Um, we talked about uh, coagulation temperatures today. Um, we talked about, um, gosh, all sorts of egg stuff, porous shells. That was another thing we talked about. And then we started rolling through some of your breakfast eggs to order cookery, right? We did your over easies. Well, we started out with sunny side up. Then we did an over hard, we did an over medium. Let me grab all these eggs. It looks like the end of one of my, my culinary classes, right? Uh, my over hard, you know, I got, I got more browning than I like, but my over hard and my over medium are there, sunny side up. I've got an American style scramble. Boy, you can't see that very well. An American style scramble there. I've got an over easy right here. Boom, I've got a basted egg over there. I've got the French style scramble there. I've got a French omelet. And I'm probably going to break out a blowtorch and melt my cheese on this guy, okay? But there's the French style omelet, and that's the one with the topping on top. The omelet is underneath and then split open. And then I have your American Diner Classic right there, okay? Beautifully formed, and uh, um, it actually makes me want to eat eggs, okay? Not too much browning, too, I should say looking pretty good. So I've done trash my kitchen, but that was a fun one. And I think it was a, a crucial one, okay? Knowing how to scramble an egg and how to flip an egg and everything. This is kitchen survival. You need this stuff. And um, hey, where else are you going to get it with uh, for free, right? You know, uh, I'm a little bit of a funny looking guy, so you don't have to pay for this stuff. That's what it's all about, right? Um, uh, seriously, guys, I'm laying down some real uh, kitchen technique in these, these Monday shows. Again, that's every Monday at four o'clock. We're doing industry cooking. It's my old brand that I started a couple of years ago. I, I, I got to get people cooking. I want I, It makes me crazy that people sit on the couch and watch Food Network and eat processed food, right? That's what this is all about. So, um, hey, some breakfast knowledge here. Um, let's see. This Thursday, you're going to get some meat knowledge. I've got um, J.P. Corey. He's probably one of Sacramento's most well-known um, meat purveyors among the chef community. He's been selling meat to the chefs and restaurants in this town for uh, going on 20 years here. Everybody knows this guy. And I'm going to bring him on the show to kind of talk about um, meat. Meat, okay. I talk a lot about like naturally raised meat and, and stuff like that. I, I kind of do a lot of that in my shows, but I wanted to kind of talk about um, the meat industry and what that looks like. So he's generously uh, agreed to come on. He did an interview with me and um, hey, we're going to hash out some we kind of what um, commodity beef production looks like. Okay. So that's um, Thursday's show and that's going to be on a between the two stoves. Um, let's see next week. I'm going to be knocking out a mushroom class, but after that, I'm going to be rolling into more of these breakfast breakfast classes. I want to knock out breakfast, right? And so you'll see me do a potato day and I want to do, uh, I was talking about an eggs Benedict day where we'll cover Holland days and we'll cover poached eggs and things like that, right? Um, so 
Hey, that's the show. Throw my towel on down. I'm throwing the towel in. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little something from this. Um, and uh, um, that's about all I have uh, uh, today. Okay. Uh, don't forget to be true to your food and it will never be fake. Okay. And always, always remember that the party's always, always in the kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have today. Class is dismissed.